Hi there. Back again. Uh, Jason Leopold. I'm a senior investigative reporter uh, over at BuzzFeed News. And uh, thank you, uh, Internet Archive, Lisa, Ryan, everyone, uh, for inviting me here today. Uh, I'm going to speak to you as a journalist uh, and uh, explain uh, ha again a bit how uh, Aaron inspired me and, and, and how I think you can sort of uh, uh, take Aaron's vision and, and um, uh, in terms of information being free, uh, prying loose information, and what you can do. Uh, as I mentioned in my talk uh, a bit earlier, uh, I was really inspired by Aaron as a journalist when I discovered, um, you know, many years ago, uh, how he uh, was just really compelled to obtain information, to publish information, uh, to uh, share information with the public. And uh, he did that also through uh, the Freedom of Information Act, which I, which I spoke about in my talk. Uh, I didn't go into great detail about what I looked into, what, what FOIA requests he was filing, but I'd like to give you just an idea of, uh, or uh, share with you some of the requests that uh, uh, Aaron had filed um, prior to his passing. And um, this is, some of these are fascinating. Uh, he asked the U.S. Mint uh, for, uh, he asked the U.S. Mint for copies of its 2005 survey results, which claimed 147 million adults continue to collect the 50 state quarters, the most successful coin uh, program in the nation's history. Uh, he, I, I have no idea why he was looking for this information. Uh, if anybody has any info, please uh, share it. Uh, he also uh, asked the, um, he asked the Justice Department as well for any records requests made to Amazon and any responses from Amazon in connection with any s such requests. I don't think he worded it very well, but uh, I, I, he also looked for subpoenas, warrants, 2703 orders, national security letters. Um, he also uh, sought from the government any policies, procedures, or guides for using data stored by Google for investigations, data collection, and surveillance. Uh, so you know, as I started looking at this I, I, and, and learning more about who Aaron Schwartz was, um, uh, I could see that he was incredibly passionate about information and the fact that the public uh, had a right to this information. Uh, and it's, as, as I mentioned in my talk earlier, it's what got me started to truly aggressively uh, use FOIA. Um, and, uh, you know, aside from the fact that I just saw this, you know, these great injustices that were, you know, that were happening to him. So I would say this is that, you know, and, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, if Aaron Schwartz were here today, he'd probably uh, agree. Everyone here has, uh, we, we're all fortunate enough that we can all use the Freedom of Information Act uh, to pry loose uh, information. It, uh, it really doesn't cost anything. I know the government may say, hey, it's going to, uh, it, it's going to, uh, uh, a search fee may result from, from what you're uh, asking for. If that happens, let me know and uh, I'll tell you how to appeal it. But uh, I would say that everyone here should pick a FOIA or, or pick an agency uh, and file, you know, a, fr a Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, and uh, to do so in, in thinking of, you know, the types of records that uh, Aaron was uh, going after, and uh, which is you know incredible. It's here we have this incredibly powerful tool. You can empower yourself by using it. You can pry loose information from the government, uh, even on the state level, the local level. Uh, and I think that would be uh, an amazing, amazing tribute uh, to this incredibly talented young man whose uh, uh, whose life was cut short way too soon. Thank you.